So in this video, we're going to show how the Boardwalk Collaboration Platform can be used to support a project management application. So let's start by opening up this project file, which is course called Project List. And it opens up in Excel 2010. And this just shows a, a fairly standard project management task list, where you have different projects that you're running, uh, there's different project tasks that you're trying to manage within each one of these project names. And there's also multiple people that you want to be able to have access the data and provide input to the project management task overall. Well, how do you do that today? I mean, if you want to have people working at the same time, then you'd have to put this on a shared drive. You'd have to put it inside of SharePoint and people would do check in or check out. Or you could cut and paste it into multiple files and then manually consolidate it. Well, the Boardwalk Collaboration Platform gives you the ability to share data at a cell level between multiple users using much the same capabilities that you're accustomed to with, for example, print area. Because what BCP does is it gives you the ability to select a range of data, like this information here, and say, you know what, I want to share this through the database. So there's a plugin that gets installed inside of Excel that lets you say, I want to create a linked version of this. So basically create the database on the fly and say, you know what, my login or my username is manager. And this is now going out to the server in the cloud. And it says, what are the different collaborations that are set up for my company? In this case, the company Acme. And, and this could be a SharePoint data environment. But the trick is, is that rather than Excel files, these are ranges of data inside of Excel. And I can say, I want to create a range of data called project list that is going to be this collaboration for this information that I want to share with multiple users. So what happens is, is a, a column gets added that provides the, the row IDs for the database. And all the information is stored as is, including information that says, for example, formulas that are saying, take this data value and multiply it times 8 and give this information as a sum or a product of this multiplication. Now with BCP, you don't have to go in and program the database. If I had taken this and put this out to an access database, it wouldn't know what to do with the formula. But in the case of BCP, it uses the data as is. And now that I've set this up as a version that can be shared, I can apply access control and say, you know what, I want user one to only see their rows. I don't want them to see the rows for user two. Well, how does that work? Well, since I'm the process administrator, I can go into another sheet and I can say, you know what, let's go grab the active list of users that I have out here from, of course, the data environment and say, well, you know, here's my user access table. These are the active, active users that are out there. And this information can come from LDAP. It can come from Active Directory in terms of who the active users are. And then what you do is you say, well, take one of the columns from the collaborative data, which in this case is the owner column right here, and use that as a basically a filter such that when user one logs in and wants to interact with his data, they're only able to see the rows where user one shows up in the row. So the way you do that is you say, go ahead and apply access control against this data. And now when user one wants to interact with the data, they're only going to see the rows of data that are associated with user one. So now if I go ahead and say, well, let's go ahead and open up a new file. And I'm going to log out and I'm going to do a login now or, or a link import as user one. So now when I say I'm user one and user one goes and looks and sees what collaborations are available, here's the project management list. And I can say, go grab that data and bring it into my local Excel file. So now here I've created an instance of the data that's linked to the database, but is only showing me the data for user one. So I can say, well, let's go ahead and save this on my desktop. You know, so I'll go ahead and make this a macro enabled um, file for, and I'll say this is going to be called user one. Uh, and I've got a number of these out here, so it's going to tell me that I'm going to replace that. But now I can start making changes to the data, push it back to the database in the cloud, and then have those changes go back to the other user. So let's say, for example, I want to take this one and change this one to December. And maybe the actual work hours for you know this guy down here are, is going to be uh, 288. And uh, you know maybe I want to come in here and change this formula and say, you know for this one right here, I'm going to make it times 12 instead of times 8. So you're able to go in and modify the data. You can even come in and say, you know what, I'm going to add a new row here, and I'm going to take all of this data and I'm simply going to copy and paste it 
down to this next row and say that this is now a new item and uh, maybe this is going to start on uh, 12 you know 21 and add on 12 slash 29 and um, this one's going to cost uh, $3,500 so I've made my changes here and now I want to share them with other users so I simply go in and say you know what since I've already established connection to the data all I need to do is submit my changes to the database so I say submit this and say these are my updates and push this information out to the database and basically now this update has been pushed to the server and it's immediately available for any other user so if I save that and say okay well let's go back and see what the project manager would look like the project manager is going to see this uh, same file and then when I come in and I say you know let's log in as the manager then the manager is going to say well let's see what information is out there on the server and it's telling me that there's two ranges of data that are active inside this file one is the user access control that you saw which there aren't any changes but the other one is the project list and it's telling me there's an update that's missing so if I say go grab that and bring it into my file then I can see the changes come in at a cell level so here's the new row that I added here's the new change to that data value here's this information you can see that the formula has been changed from times 8 to times 12 you can see that that data is updated up here and then here's the new uh, data value that was set here and you're always guaranteed to see the most recent information when you click on refresh and submit but you can also go in and say you know what I want to see how this data has changed over time so show me the history of this cell and how many changes have been done and of course I just created this a minute ago so it's only showing me two changes but without any programming BCP stores all of the changes to just the cells that have been updated and it creates slices of the information in what we call a cuboid not to be confused with an OLAP cube because only the cells that have been changed are put in and then that information is accessible for running reports and comparing history so the last thing I want to be able to do is say well you know maybe I want to add a uh, um, after here I'm going to add a new column called comments because I want to be able to collect information from the people in the field I'm going to say this is new and um, maybe I'll go in here and change this guy from uh, 1218 to 12 you know 22 and uh, push these changes back out so I make my updates I now do my change as the manager and I say another update push that out to the database and now not only have I updated the data value but I've also updated the structure I've added this new comments column so if I come over to user one now and user one says well gee I don't know what's out there and when I say now go out and show me as user one what's been changed then when that data value or when I do that refresh it says hey there's been an update to the database as you would expect and now of course the formatting gets shifted over a little bit but here's the new column that was added and also here's the change that I had so you can see that using BCP you're able to make dynamic changes to both rows and columns you're able to see how changes have changed over time and go back into any cell and see what the update is you can even go back and say show me how this has changed over any period of time for the entire set of data and then recreate the database as of any time to say for example what exactly did this person do at this time and show me the database at that time so here I'm in and I'm able to see that the data value changed from 216 to 324 and these data values of course are non-formatted dates but all of these data values back in time are accessible on a net change basis so as a project manager you're always assured of knowing what the most recent information is but you also can collect and see all the changes over time and the way this is ultimately deployed often is I showed you how I created everything from scratch but Boardwalk Tech provides process templates for any number of processes including of course project management and what we provide is an environment where you can add some command buttons on top to do data validations um, you're also able of course if you're in this environment to be able to take advantage of some of the reporting capabilities because all of the information is automatically being consolidated so that you're able to see you know how does my different pro project tasks get allocated across their current status and everyone is assured of being uh, involved or up to date with the most recent changes 
So for additional information, please contact us at www.boardwalktech.com.